Hey, what's up guys? It's M and welcome back to the channel. Today we're starting off the Twitch Things series and it will be a playlist on the channel that has to do with anything Twitch related, but still art. So if you are an artist that make things for people on Twitch or any other streaming platform actually, then this will be helpful for you. And I'm very excited because today we are going to just look at the basics of how I create emotes. I use Clip Studio Paint. I've loved this program since I started using it. I used to use some different free softwares that were out there and they're also very good. But I just love using Clip Studio because it allows me to work on multiple tablets and still have all the things that I'm working on together. So that's just basically my choice. There are a lot of other different softwares and programs out there and I recommend you look around and you choose something that is good for you. But if you are using Clip Studio, then this is definitely the video for you. And I'm just going to show you basically the process I go through when I work on emotes. And I hope you guys enjoy this, whether you are a established artist or you're starting out and you really want to make some emotes for people on Twitch, but high quality emotes, right? Because we want their channels to look all saucy and stuff. So without me rambling on any further, let's get on into the video. So the first thing I do is I open a new file and name it something so it's easy to find. And then I work on the size 360 by 360 pixels. I just find it to be a nice size to work on for emotes. It's a little bit bigger than 112, which is the biggest size you need, but it's not too big that you spend time on details you won't see. Then the next thing I do is I change the background color of my canvas to this gray color because the white's really harsh on my eyes. And also this gray color kind of gives me an idea of how the emote will look when it's used on a Twitch dark mode chat or in Discord, which is the two main places that someone would use twitch emotes it's very important that you remember though when we export this emote that you take away the background color just while you're exporting otherwise it will export with that next step though and you can see i'm already busy with that is i choose a character for my emote or a subject and i kind of searched around and i found this meep i don't know what to call it but it's a meep and I thought it was really cute and the colors would look really nice on the gray. If I'm doing emotes for someone else, then they do that work for me and I don't need to think about it. I can just do what they want. But when I do something for myself, then I think of what I'm drawing and also what type of emote it is. Is it a love emote? Is it a rip emote? Or is it, in this case, a high emote? And I went for a high emote because something like with a love emote, you have the heart there and it's very clear that it's a love emote doesn't matter how good the emote is or not because the heart's there so i went with a high because i feel like it's difficult to portray it if you're not focusing on the right things so these are the things i focus on you can't have too much detail in your emote because it's really small so most emotes are more zoomed in focused on the expression or the hand in this case and you need to make sure that your eyes are literally portraying the emotion. So high being like cutesy high, is it a scared high? You'll see me redo the eyes a lot in this emote. And every time I do it, I kind of think, oh, it's okay. And then I'll make a new layer to refine my sketch. And then I'll feel like I could have done better. Take away the eyes, redo them. That's kind of how it goes. Sometimes I'll redo the body and the mouth and everything until I find something that I'm satisfied with. If I'm really struggling with something, I'll look on the internet for references of expressions and kind of use that as inspiration. But here I was kind of just going with what I feel. And the reason I'm doing so many layers over and over again is I call it refining because I want my last sketch layer to be the final lines that I use as outlines. And when I do this layer, the one I'm currently busy with, I'll also put up the stability of my lines all the way to 100%. So it gives the line a little bit of a latency to your pen. So where your pen goes, the pen is a little bit in front of the line. So you can kind of see where the line is gonna go. It just gives you a cleaner line and I like using it for the final. I do not suggest working on that always because if you're doing color or painting, it's gonna irritate you so much because it's got a very big delay, but it's perfect for line work where you do refining. 
So after I've refined and done the eyes for the millionth time, I finally settle on some eyes that I like and I actually didn't refine the eyes in a sketch. I just think I was so done by this point. I was like, let me just get the color into this baby. And I went kind of with the idea of the pink, orange, pastel-y color that this meep had in the image that I saw. And I'm not gonna talk through coloring as much and shading. I feel like that's a whole new video on its own. I kind of just go with what my style is. Some people will ask for blocky shading lines. Some people like my organic style of, I wouldn't call it digital painting yet. I'm on my journey to more digital paintings, but some people prefer, prefer my style. Some people like solid shading lines. So it's just all up to you and what you want. I've really enjoyed the digital painting route I've gone, but you just need to do what feels right to you i'm a poet and i don't even know let's go last thing i do on my final line layer i'll make a mask layer and i will color the lines the same color as a drawing because i don't like the solid black lines in all my emotes with some of my emotes i feel like they are essential to the emote but with this one particularly i felt like a soft squishy look was more what i needed and then I got to this emote. Now, important part, we exporting. So you need to take away the gray background and have it on the blocks. Then we're gonna export in three sizes. You need a 112, so 112 by 112 pixel one. I like naming my emotes in the folder, so I'll call it high 112. And then I make a new one for the new size high 56 because you need a 56 by 56 pixel emote. And then the last one is high 28. So you need a 28 by 28 pixel emote. Those three sizes are what you need for Twitch to upload emote, not a sub badge. Sub badges have different sizes. These are emotes. And then always what I like to do is I make a 360. That's the size I was working in example because it just shares easier especially if i make for clients then they can see all the beauty in a little bit bigger of a picture but that's basically my process in making emotes and i'll probably make a whole series of these little meats because i think they're very cute and then sell them on my website but if you guys thought that this video was helpful and you've stuck through my weirdness up to this point please remember to give me a like so that i know that you like the content and also when you subscribe it helps my journey in my art dream and process so i would really appreciate that but i hope you have a wonderful day and you keep being creative bye